In this video, we're going to talk about velocity vectors. Um, hopefully, you are familiar with the parts of vectors. Uh, we're going to draw an arrow. Okay, so this is our vector. And we're going to let this vector represent some velocity. So we will call it v. That's what we'll label it. And remember that the length of the, uh, the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector. And the direction that the arrow points, or you know, theta, is its direction. Um, so, for example, maybe you were in a car going 50 meters per second at, maybe you know the angle, you're like going 30 degrees relative to something. Well, then you would write V equals V comma theta, or 50 meters a second comma 30 degrees. So that's what the magnitude and the angle sort of represent um, about the velocity. Now, all vectors have components, um, and in this case, we're going to have an x component of velocity and a y component of velocity. So we'll call the x component vx and the y component vy. Remember, these are kind of like the coordinates uh, if we were graphing this. Now, it is more often uh, that we decide to take the vy and draw it here so that we get a right triangle, so that's what we do uh, most of the time. And then I can use the familiar vector equations that we've learned for magnitude, direction, uh, and x and y components. For magnitude, we use the Pythagorean theorem, um, and we treat it like the hypotenuse of a right triangle, where we would take our x and our y and square them. Okay, the angle, we would use tangent inverse of the y component over the x component. For vx, we would take the hypotenuse, or the magnitude, of the velocity and multiply that by cosine of theta. And for vy, we would take the magnitude and multiply it by sine of theta. Um, and again, these three operations here, they all depend on us using uh, what I'll call unit circle angles, which means your angle is always relative to the positive x-axis. Um, and those are the, the familiar graphing angles that we use in all kinds of different um, subjects. Okay, let's let's do an example problem. You shoot a Nerf dart, giving it a velocity of 15 meters a second, angled 40 degrees above the horizontal. What are the x and y components of the velocity? Okay, well, so here you are. You're having a great time, and you've got some Nerf gun, and you shoot the Nerf gun, pew, 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 and a little tiny Nerf dart, dart comes out, and I'm going to use an arrow to represent the velocity of that Nerf dart. Now, the 15. That actually represents the magnitude of the velocity, so I would write v equals 15. And the angle theta above the horizontal, that's common. That means think about like you're on the ground, so that angle is going to be above the horizontal. Below would mean it points like down that way. Okay, so uh, your theta is 40 degrees. There will be a forward or an x component which I'll draw like this, VX, and an upward, or a Y component, which will look like this. And again, these make a right triangle for us, so we can use our VX and VY equations to solve this. Okay, so let's do the X component first. You would use the magnitude, which is like the hypotenuse of the right triangle, 15 meters a second, multiplied by cosine of 40 degrees uh, and that would give you 15 cosine of 40 is 11 uh, 11.5 and this is a component of velocity so we need to have unit meters per second okay the y component um, is going to be 15 meters a second times sine of 40 degrees which 15 sine of 40 is going to be 9.64, so we'll say 9.6 meters per second. Notice that both these components are positive, which is good because um, my velocity is up and to the right, so I need a positive y and a positive x component. Okay, good job. Now, sometimes we will be faced with problems where there are multiple velocities. Like if you've ever been um, on a moving walkway at an airport, that moving walkway, or sometimes that, you know, it's like a treadmill, it's moving in one direction, and 
you might be moving in the same direction and so you're going faster than you normally would because there are two different velocities involved. Um, when we deal with those problems, it's helpful to just use good old vector addition and subtraction to try and figure out what the resultant or the, you know, the sum of those different velocities will be. Let's do an example. You are walking one meter per second west on a bus that is moving four meters per second east. So let me draw this a terrible representation of a bus. Oh my God, <laughs> so bad. Okay, so there's the bus and you, there's the floor of the bus, you are walking backwards. So you are walking one meter per second. We'll call that V1. Or we could say VU. Doesn't matter. Let's say VU. I like that better. And the bus, the V bus, it's actually really long because it's a lot bigger. The bus is going four meters a second east, which would be to the opposite direction. So for you, we would need to say that your velocity is opposite of east or west, so negative one meter per second. Um, and since these are going in the same direction, if I want to figure out what the sum of these vectors is, right, that's what the resultant is, so I'd say sigma v for sum of the velocities, um, and it would just be the v bus plus the velocity of u, which is four meters a second minus one or three meters a second. So we would say that this is your velocity relative to the ground or if there was someone on the ground outside of the bus looking at you, pew, 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 they would see you actually moving forward as the bus moves forward. But because you're walking to the back of the bus, you wouldn't be moving as fast as the bus is. You'd be moving slightly slower. All right, let's do another example. You're on a boat. You go 20 meters a second north in a river that is traveling 10 meters a second east. What is your resultant velocity? All right, this is a classic velocity sum question. Okay, so basically, here is you on your little boat. Yay, you're having a great time. You are going to drive the boat forward, and you're going to go with a velocity. We'll say velocity of the boat of 20 meters per second north. But the river itself, which is smaller, is moving, say V river, 10 meters a second east. So what's going to happen is that the combination or the sum of these two velocities would be what you actually saw if you were some distant observer on the shore, or maybe you're flying a drone, a little tiny drone, pew, 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 above this, and you're looking down. So we add these two together, the velocity of the boat plus the velocity of the river. Um, and you could do this with components if you want, or you can kind of just visually look at it, kind of do a graphical vector addition. Um, you can do that one of two ways. One is you can add these two vectors head to tail, or you can create a parallelogram. And notice that the sum of these two velocities is going to be the diagonal of that parallelogram. So we would call this sigma v. Now this velocity actually represents how you would travel um, as you're going up the river and the river travels east. And it works out that basically uh, the x and the y component of this velocity is just the velocity of the river. So we could say the uh, x component is, is 10. Sorry. And the y component is the velocity of the boat. So that would be 20 meters a second. I will move the velocity of the boat so that it maybe looks a little bit better. Right? The velocity of the boat. Okay, so to figure out what the magnitude of this velocity is, we would use the Pythagorean theorem, and we would do the x, 10 meters per second squared, plus the y, and 
do the square root. So square root of 10 squared plus 20 squared gives me 22.36. We'll call that 22.4. Okay, so the magnitude of the velocity is 22.4. And this angle, theta, we will need to find uh, using tangent inverse. So we take theta equals tangent inverse. The y component is 20. So we would do 20 meters a second over the x, which is 10. Um, and tangent inverse of 20 over 10 is going to give me 63.43, so 63.4 degrees. So that is the angle. We could say that that's 63.4 degrees, the angle of the velocity. Okay, if I wanted to maybe write that a little neater, I would say the sum of these velocities will give me 22.4 meters a second at 63.4 degrees. And we have found the resultant velocity, both the magnitude and the direction. All right, let's do one more problem. You are flying in a small plane with a velocity of 250 meters per second east when you are suddenly caught in a wind that is moving 30 meters a second at 20 degrees. What is your resultant velocity? Okay, so um, in this problem, basically, here's the plane. Yeah, plane, yeah! The plane has a velocity east. We could call that V plane, VP. Um, and the magnitude is 250 meters a second. Then suddenly, a wind moving 30 meters per second at 20 degrees, which we'll assume that that's relative to east. So we'll just draw an angle of 30 degrees above this. Um, 30 meters a second is pretty small, so it would kind of look like that. The velocity of the wind hits the plane. And what we'll notice is that the plane itself will actually move um, in kind of a diagonal line. And if you've noticed, we can either add these vectors head to tail, the velocity of the wind, and then the resultant will be the diagonal um, that could be a parallelogram if we added uh, or created a parallelogram out of the different sides. Okay, so we would call this sigma v, the, the sum of these two velocities. Um, and I'm actually going to erase that and let you look at it like this. So we want to find the resultant of those two velocities. And in this problem, it might be easier for us to make use of the x and the y charts um, that we've been working with so far. So let's do that. Let's figure out what are the x and y components for the plane's velocity, and then secondly, for the velocity of the wind. So the plane should be easy. The 250 meters per second is entirely in x velocity. So we would say 250. Um, the y component, let me say, sorry, meters per second. The y component is zero because there's just nothing pointing up. Okay, but for this vw, I'll kind of draw this down here so we can get a better picture. Velocity of the wind there is going to be an x component, vwx, and a y component, vwy, that I will need to find using the magnitude, 30 meters a second, and the angle, 30 degrees. That's what I'm going to put in for my x and y chart. So let's start with the x component. vwx is going to be the magnitude, so 30, times cosine of the angle, 30 meters a second times cosine, oh sorry, not 30, 20 degrees, Whew. 20 degrees, so cosine of 20 degrees, which is 28.19, so 28.2 meters per second. Um, and the y component, vy, sorry, vwy, is going to be the magnitude vw, velocity of the wind, times sine of that angle. So this would be 30 meters a second 
times sine of 20 degrees. Okay, so 30 sine 20 gives me 10.3, or 10.26, but we'll round that to 10.3 meters a second. Okay, so for the x column, I would write 28.2, and for the y, 10.3. So now I have enough information to figure out what the sum of the x components is. It would be 250 plus 28.2, which is 278.2. Um, and then I also have enough information to find the sum of the y components, which would be 0 plus 10.3, so 10.3. Now I'm going to get rid of this, um, the velocity of the wind stuff that we just worked with. And I'm going to erase these two velocities on my picture so we only see the resultant. Uh, and hopefully this will help me see that I've got 10.3 meters a second. And then, I'm sorry, 278.2 meters a second for the x and 10.3 for the y. So now what I have to do is figure out what's the hypotenuse of a right triangle with 278.2 uh, and 10.3. And then I find the angle of that same thing. Again, we would call that the magnitude um, and then theta is the angle. So let's find the magnitude of the net. The square root of the x component, 278.2 meters a second the whole thing squared plus 10.3 meters a second sorry the whole thing squared um, and that's going to give me 278.2 squared plus 10.3 squared 278.4 so the wind doesn't really change the amount of um, speed that much because it's a pretty small velocity And the angle theta, we would do tangent inverse of the y over the x. So the y is 10.3. The x is 278.2. And tangent inverse of 10.3 divided by 278. I'm sorry, yeah, 2 is 2.12 degrees. So 2.1 degrees. So it, that wind is so small that it speeds the plane up just a little bit, a tiny bit, um, but it does change the angle, the, the, the direction of that velocity slightly. Uh, and if I wanted to write this in appropriate notation, I would say the resultant velocity is 278.4 meters per second, comma, 2.1 degrees. Okay, great. So in this video, you have learned how to um, find x and y components of velocity vectors and also how to add multiple velocity vectors in these situations where there may be something that's moving in a medium that's moving or on a road that's moving or on a, a track that's moving, in, in water that's moving, in air that's moving, those sort of things. Congratulations, you are done.